This episode is brought to you by LadyArtLove.com. LadyArtLove.com is the online store that carries my clothing line, the Carl Jackson Collection. So I hope you check them out. They are the official sponsor of this episode, LadyArtLove.com. Tonight I have my daughter with me. She is going to tell a few jokes, or at least one joke. But I also have my uh, my guest Tuesday night. She is the star of my new series, Forgiven, that's coming on the Fox Tubi, uh, well, Fox on Tubi Network. Uh, wonderful um, series that I produce and I'm actually starring in, and it's a great uh, show. So I wanted her on the show because she's iconic. Tuesday night is iconic, world renowned. Uh, you know her from the night. Mayor on Elm Street film series, A Nightmare on Elm Street film series. Uh, it was, I can't even believe I got her to do this show and she did it, she agreed, and I'm, she's a wonderful singer, actress. So we're getting ready to see the interview that I did with her. But before we see the interview, you have a joke? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Why did the puppy jump into the pool? Why did the puppy jump into the pool? I don't know, why? Because he was a hot dog. <laughs> that was a good one. Never heard that one. Anybody laugh at that? I did. Did anybody else laugh at that? Uh, I hope so. You hope so? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the Carl Jackson Podcast. I'm happy and delighted that you guys are watching us on the CJC Network, as well as listening on all podcast platforms. You guys have keep have been keeping me uh, busy. And we, our guests have been getting better and better each week. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that watches us. I'm really excited about my guest today because my guest is the star of my new series. Uh, the series is called Forgiven, and it's going to be uh, available on the Fox uh, Tubi streaming service. Fox just bought Tubi. And, uh, wow, Tubi cool. Yeah, Tubi is excited about the show. They've been on me all year about it to finish it. So we finally finished it. And Fox is behind it. Tubi is behind it. And they love the show so far. And this young lady did an amazing job in the show. And she's an iconic uh, movie star, TV star. She's a singer, amazing singer. I love her music. And I am like really just humbled and blessed that the angels gave me the gift of my guest Tuesday night. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, how you doing Tuesday? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How, you look. You look good. Thank you. I, I like look, your hat. I don't look like I look on the set, right? Because on the set, I'm like just in work mode. <laughs> Yeah, now you look all cool and, and you know, hip and cool. I like it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So I wanted to talk to you a few minutes about your career. You know, I was doing some little research on you over the course of the last, I guess, couple of weeks because I wanted to kind of prepare for how I was going to, you know, let people know about the show. And you've done an incredible amount of work. You've, you've had a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely a ride. Yes. How did you get started? Um, I got started, um, I think the whole thing was because I lived in a, in a house where that kind of stuff was going on. I mean, my dad was a really well-known songwriter. And, um, you know, he wrote for people like Elvis and Frank Sinatra and Paul McCartney and just all these different people. And I was around entertainment so much. And all I know is I always wanted to like put on shows for all these people that came over to my dad's and my dad's like, go, go in your room. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know? And I'm like out there, like in front of like, I don't even know who it was like Ricky Nelson or somebody like from the fifties. And I didn't even know like who it was. And I just, I loved acting. I just, for some reason, and I, I used to love Sonny and Cher <laughs> and I used to imitate Cher when I was little, I wanted to do that for everybody as well. So who's your dad? Uh, his name is Baker Knight. He um, wrote, um, we won Song of the Year. I went with him to get his award um, in 76. Um, he 
he's written for everybody that you can think of. I mean, he was just amazingly talented. I miss my dad so much. He was, he was the greatest. Oh, when did he pass? 2005. Oh, wow. Wow. Crazy. So, um, your dad was, was a songwriter and how did you know singing, um, was something that you could do? When did you know what, 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 what age were you when you knew that you could sing? Well, when I was little, um, when my dad was doing his music and having a lot of people do his demos, you know, for him, he would have people like Emmy Lou Harris, um, you know, um, Kim Carnes, um, you know, and all these like really famous people doing his demos. And I would get really mad at him because I, would, I was like eight years old and I was like, wait a minute, I didn't get to do it. How come I can't sing your demos? I mean, you're my dad, you know, and he, and, and he, and he would be like, look, you know, you're only, you're young, your voice is going to change. Let's give it some time and then I'll let you, uh, we'll go, we'll get into it. But it was so funny. Now thinking back on those times, my dad had to say that to me. It just cracks me up because <laughs> he was, he was so sweet about it, you know, and like so serious, but I knew he was thinking, what is she crazy? She's eight years old. She's going to sing my demos. Right, right, gonna, right, right. You know? <laughs> So when did you choose acting over, you didn't really choose acting over singing, I guess, but you, you kind of went down the, the acting road, right? Yeah, I did. You know, after I did um, General Hospital, I was on that for a while. And after I did that, I, I just loved it so much. And then I got Nightmare on Elm Street and I just seemed to gravitate towards the acting so much more. That just sort of filled something in me, um, playing other characters and, and, and doing that because I'm kind of shy normally, but when I get in front of a, a camera, I'm not shy anymore and I become that character. So I think that's good. And with music, it's, it's also great for me because when you're on stage and you're singing, you're in your own little bubble. And, and there's, you know, it's very different than acting. Acting, you're working off the other actor. So you've gotta be listening. Um, but for music, you know, you can just kind of glide and fly in your own little world. And, and I love that too. But if I had to pick my, my most favorite, favorite, uh, you know, way to go, it would have to be acting. Yeah. It seems like acting is your thing because you, yeah. you're really good at it. Thank you. When did you know that you could make a career out of it? When, when did you figure it out? Was it, was it the film, the Freddy Krueger film? The night yeah, the it was. You really figured it yeah. out? Yeah. That was when I decided, okay, I'm going to get serious about this. I'm going to kind of put the music on a back burner for a minute, and I'm going to do this. Um, and I did just the acting uh, for a very long time and kind of put my music on the side. And then it started coming back to me. And, and as I was in other projects, I was able to play songs in the movies. So I was able to do music for other films. And so that, then I was like, wow, this is great. I can do both, you know, and then I don't have to give up one or have one on the side. So um, that's my real favorite thing to do is to try to place, try to do both things if I can, because yeah, I feel we, like I, I feel like I do them a hundred percent when I'm doing them. It's not like I give singing 80% and acting a hundred. It's, it's really, you know, a hundred percent for both really. What's the favorite project before my project? What was your favorite before project? Before your project, <laughs> yeah, of before, course. Before my project. What was your favorite project that you worked on? I, and I, I don't mean it like, okay, the rest of them weren't good. I meant like your favorite character to play. My favorite character was a series that I did with Drew Barrymore, where I played her sister. Um, also in the cast was Lisa Hartman and Jennifer Beals. Um, I... 2000 Malibu Road. It was yep. amazing. Character. Aaron Spelling. Yes. I got to, uh, I got to play this um, complete character that was not me at all. I had dark hair. I had glasses. I had prosthetic makeup to make me look heavy. I had um, a, a fat suit on. I mean, it was, it was the best. It, and it was directed by Joel Schumacher, which was... Batman, um, all those films. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Just amazing. He directed that show. I didn't know that. He did. He directed all of them. Wow. I didn't know that. So yeah. what happened to the show? Because I remember it was really big. And then all yeah. of a sudden yanked it. What well, they, Aaron Spelling and CBS could not uh, come up with uh, an agreement because uh, Melrose Place was on and it was doing well. And then we came on and we kind of wiped it out for a few weeks. 
And uh, I guess Aaron didn't want that to happen. He wanted to have them both, you know, hit or whatever. And uh, but CBS wouldn't budge, or he wouldn't budge on what they wanted to do. So we were we were supposed to do fifty six more episodes. So we were all bummed out big time. Oh man, that show was a really good show too. Yeah, and I had the best character because you know who, you know how great to like be the little you know the little witch of the show and be right. like you know the, the scheming you know into everybody's business. Right. It, it was just really fun for me. Yeah. Right. So when you when you figured out that acting was your road, how did you get your album um, done? What what inspired that to happen? What 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 energies or cosmic things that happened to make that record come out that record is a really nice i'm talking about your first album what what how did that come about because that's a really good album and you can tell they spent a lot of money production wise yeah they did yeah it was produced by carl richardson who's great he's done so many big albums and frank wildhorn who is now a big huge broadway producer um the thing about that album was that was really my second album my very first album that i did was before that for CBS, and it was really my heart and soul. And what they did was they kind of came in and tore it apart and said, look, uh, you know, we know you love this one better and blah, 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 but we want to change you and make you into this other sort of, uh, let's say, uh, rock and roll Madonna thing going on. And then they did that album, and I did that album with, with them. That, so that, my first album that you think is my first album, is the one that I did with them. And although it was produced amazing, there are certain songs on there. My duet with the Commodores, did you hear that one? Oh, yeah, I loved it. Love uh, I love I love that. Now there are certain things on there that I flip and love, but my first album was my heart. So the first album never came out. No, the first album never came out. Oh, I have wow. that. I'll send it to you. So yeah, send it to me. I want to hear that. So they they pulled a record company move. Basically, they wanted to market you a certain way. Right. And they just it scratched is, you know the what's first so, idea. Yeah, and you, yeah, and you know what's so funny is when they saw me when they when they saw me and they signed me. That's what I was doing. I was doing those ones that they changed, and that was what got them to sign me. And then all of a sudden, they're like, "Well, let's kind of change the, you know, the, the whole menu here." And you know, you know how they do. You know right. how they do. Right. Yeah. So did they? So were they trying to compete with Madonna? Because you look a lot like Madonna to me. Yeah, I mean, I think they were definitely trying to do that. And what, what's so funny about Madonna is uh, she actually um, wanted me to play her in uh, her her uh, series. Um, it was when I did Mistress. She, her, really? her friends saw me in that and they were like, oh my God, wait till Madonna sees you, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then they contacted me and it was all supposed to happen. And then it fell through because she decided not to do it yet because she was too young. Oh, uh, right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, now, but now she might be too old. <laughs> I know, now she might be too old, but I could play her at some point, I bet. Well, you know, you could play her, you could play her at any age, I think, with the right technology and prosthetics now because everything has changed since then anyway yeah so, totally. you know performance wise is what i hope they would look for if they decided to do that madonna film so let me ask you this um um you know you're on my show forgiven it's our show and i want to know uh and i say our because everybody works together it's a collaborative effort i might have my name on it but it's just really a group of us that's working together to make something come together. That's on any project. What was about, what was, what was it, I should say, about the character that made you decide to do my project? Because again, you know, you can pretty much pick and choose what you want to do. And I just feel humbled that I got you. So what, what was it about the character that made you go, yes, this could actually work for me? Well, I really liked the idea. I liked the story line. I liked what it was saying. And I, I thought it would be a really pertinent thing. I just thought that, and I, lo I loved you right, right, right away because Aww. you're so sweet. And, and just the way that you talked to me about it and the way it was, um, I, it just, I immediately clicked with you. I think you felt that too. I did. Um, we clicked. And uh, when you sent me the, the outlines right. for it and stuff, I was like, wow, this is really cool. And uh and I thought I'd love to play this character because of what happens. I like the way she 
I, would, I like the way I start off uh, a certain way. I don't want to give any way away right. anything. Um, right. And the way she evolves. I like that. Um, I, think, I think that was good. And that was appealing to me in the character. Amelia is an amazing character to me because what I like about Amelia is she's really, a, there's a little bit of Amelia in all of us. Yep. And what happens is we're so judgmental of other people that sometimes it's hard, hard for us to see that we are a little bit of Amelia. Yeah. And so I like seeing the fact, I like the fact that Amelia has to transition, not giving away too much. But yeah. circumstances make her kind of have to see things in a different light, you know? I mean, Exactly. Yeah, and that's what appealed to me. I loved that. And I thought the whole, just the whole premise is right. so, is so uh, good for today. Right. Um, I, I think it really pulls in a lot of stuff from today. And I think that people are going to get it and understand it and have a feeling for it. I think that there's a lot of heart in it. And you I, didn't and even I, know that. And I know. The future was going to be this the, you know what i mean i know it's crazy how we would do when even before we started filming we didn't even know like we were just no. talking about the concept and uh -huh. you know getting it you know the shooting schedule together but we didn't even know <laughs> that it would be so on time like we had no idea you know yeah it was just it was perfect timing i mean it was just one of those things that you know that happened magically and I think I think there's a lot of magic around it, so I, so I really like that. Absolutely, uh, Piggy. Just kind of pivot a bit to uh, I want to hear a couple stories about what it was like to work on the Freddy Krueger films. I actually had I saw an interview with the um, with one of the cast members. Uh, actually, the guy that plays Freddy. I don't know his name by heart, but oh, Robert England. Robert, yeah, Robert, and he's a really nice guy. Oh, he's great. He's great. He's, he's so fun. Uh, he, he's like a storyteller. I mean, you can sit down with him for like, with a bottle of wine for like 10 hours and he'll be telling you stories that you, you're, you just stay interested. Like, you know, like you just sat down. He's great. So what, what, uh, what, give me a couple stories of what it was like to work on such an iconic, I mean, right now it's probably a, a cult film. I, I heard, I saw somewhere that that film has been seen in like, well, really the whole series, but there's a, two or three of those films, you're in one of them, where it's like a cult following. And, oh, yeah. And it's like globally, you know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so that that's like a cult following to the, to the film series. I even, there's like families and dads that share, their, share it with their kids, you know? Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. You're so right. I mean, when they come up to like, you know, when I do conventions and they come up to my table, I mean, it's amazing. It's like, I don't know which one is the one who's the fan. There's like the kid, the, the mom, the aunt. I mean, I'm like, I don't know which one it is. And it always shocks me when it's like the 10 year old boy who knows everything about it, you know? It's crazy. It's, it, it's like, it's surpassed decades. It's just crazy. It's so big and, that uh, I think the studio wanted to do a remake and they couldn't. Yeah. Because the original was so huge, you know, with DVD and streaming and, uh, you know, everything is keeps, it won't die. It just won't die. So it was like, no. it's almost like it was, it's too soon to remake it when people are still into the original films. Yeah, well, they tried to remake it with another actor playing Robert, and that just failed horribly. Horribly, right. That was just, I mean, I, I mean, and, and it's funny because the actor who played him is an amazing actor. Right. He's just not, he's just not Freddie. Right, right. You know, there's right. only one Robert who has that swagger and that sort of even, even like I say this and people think I'm crazy, but I, I think he's even got a sex appeal to him. The way he oh, walks yeah. and the way he talks and the way he does his things, he's just got swagger. He's, there's something about it. What made it work was because of him. I mean, if you really think about it, uh, as you just said, he was almost like a, the Bruce Willis, you know, he was like, yeah. the, you know, of, of, of horror film. Like he was cool. He was funny, witty. The character was witty, even yep. afraid, but at the same time laughing. 
it was like exactly exactly <laughs> and our movie uh number four the one that i'm in was the most successful one out of the whole bunch of the and, whole series yeah and i mean the director rennie harlan he was amazing he he was so he was so ahead of his time that yes. he he put so much stuff in there that was so uh ahead of its time I yes guess. How and he put my song in there, so I loved him. <laughs> uh, yeah, tell tell us a little bit of how the, I was gonna get just gonna ask you two questions. So how did the song come about for you to do the theme song for that film? Well, what happened was I heard that they wanted music. And so I called up my music partner at the time and I said, you know, we've got to write something for this movie and it's gotta be good. I go, let's make it a love song to Freddie, you know? Right. And so, and so, uh, we just got in the studio. They gave us we they gave us a day. We did it in like four hours. We wrote the whole thing. We we recorded the whole thing in one day, and then I brought it back that next day, and I played it for them in my car with the doors open on my speakers, and the director and the producer just they freaked out over it. I mean, it was so I was so blessed because. They, he loved it. He was like, oh, my God, Tuesday, I love this. He's like, you know, he's from Finland. Right. Right. And he was like, oh, my God, this has to be in the film. And I'm like, oh, my God, yay, you know. And then um, I didn't even know it was going to be the title song. I had no idea until I sat down in the theater and I saw it start the movie. And I just I had chills right now just thinking about that feeling that I had. Wow. It, it was it was so it was one of those feelings that you just never forget. So uh, the 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 song when it went to do, it did amazing things. How does it feel looking back and seeing how big of a cult following you have because of that character? Does that bother you? Does it like piss you off, or is it no, something that no, or is no, it something no. that really makes you happy? No, it really makes me happy. I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for being in that franchise uh, because I mean, it has done so much for me in my life for these last years that it's been, I mean, you know, like 30 years ago, right. um, it just has been so beneficial and giving to me, uh, that I don't have anything but really great feelings about it and just being really, um, blessed that I was in it. What are some of the highlights of some of the fans? What have you heard that has just made you go, what? <laughs> you know, because you is a is a huge fan base um, online. If you guys are listening, check this out. You should check it out. Just Google Tuesday night, and it's just amazing how much stuff comes up just about that character. So what's like what is one of the strangest or one of the most memorable moments with a fan that you can share with well, us? Well, I think one of the most well, funny ones, I mean, I've had so many, that, um, but the one that was funny was I was in Robert's trailer with him and we were kind of going over the script and talking and, and all of a sudden we felt his trailer rocking back and forth. And it was like, what the, you know, was we right. having an earthquake or what is going on? And I opened the door and there was like 600 fans rocking the thing back and forth and it was you know it was unbelievable but it was scary wow they're gonna tip us over you know and and so robert had to go out there and he had his makeup on and everything and he went out there and started doing some freddy stuff you know right and everybody just was like whoa you know screaming and everything and then they stopped he asked them to stop rocking the trailer but that was one wow. of my like that was that was probably like the most freaky fan thing uh, and i also had a very weird freaky fan thing that happened um i had a fan crawl in my house and come through my window yeah uh, he uh he i banked at a bank that he worked at and he oh went in and God. he went in and found all my information and i was asleep one night and this is after the movie and, this is because of the movie yeah right he I and he would he came in and he unscrewed all my light bulbs like a professional I mean like like a professional something I don't know what I don't know what he planned to do but I my dog heard something and started barking and got up and I ran after it into it and I saw his feet going out my window and but they did catch him and he worked at a bank yes he worked at a bank and he looked up on the microfish back then like what, what right. all my stuff and uh, yeah, he was he was a fan. He was coming in. Obsessed to, like, fan of the of the movie. 
Yeah, and I don't know what he was planning on doing. I don't know what he was doing, but I don't really like the fact that he was in my house. That yeah, was, no, no. That creeped me out pretty bad. I moved away from there. Of course, absolutely. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Uh, have you guys traveled overseas as well, promoting, uh -huh. doing stuff? Yeah. What is that like to see the fans? Because I know they're a little different from fans in America. So what, what what's the difference that you realize there that they – they see you differently. They see you bigger. Like they see you. I, you know what? They all, all the fans, pretty much. I have to say that all the fans are so devoted and right. so, uh, so sweet and giving and everything. Even when I went to Germany and England, I mean, they were like really uh, very giving and and uh, you know they were up on their on their Nightmare on Elm Streets. They knew everything that was on. They knew the lines. They knew the words. They you know, and uh, it was it was great. I loved it. I really loved Germany because the people in Germany were amazing. Why do you think your the film that you were in out of the series? And we're talking just in case you're just now tuning in watching us on CJC. Uh, we're talking to Tuesday night, uh, the star of my new series Forgiven and. The iconic star from the uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street film series, and we're talking about her work on the film. Um, why do you think that particular film, out of the series of, of seven or eight films that they did, why do you think that's the one that resonated and is the highest grossing or the highest, most popular one out of the series? Um, well, that's easy. I think, first of all, uh, the cast was put together in a way where we all, we all had, we all clicked and that was really good. And I think that went down to Rennie Harlan. I think the, the director is really the one who pushed it into like an MTV state. Right. Uh, that, that movie's very MTV. You know what I mean? It's got right. the music, it's got the cool music, it's got the visual stuff. It's all eighties. Yes. It's all eighties. And it's, it's just, it was so hip. That I think his just, and he gave Freddie, you know, Freddie had that humor in that one even more than any of them. And I just think it, I don't know, I just think it was the, it was the best one. I, I am a big fan of, of the first one and the third one. And I am, and the fourth one. I really, I really like those. Do you uh, have any stories of what it was like to film that particular movie? Uh, well, um, it was difficult. One, you told me one story on set about the sand you want to tell that story yeah yeah the the beach scene um when i did that uh i i had to go under the sand and he, he pushes me under the sand with his foot and i was totally willing to do it they dug a hole in there you know that it was you, you could, i could go in and everything was fine but when i would go in the goggles that they gave me they would fill up with sand they weren't tight enough or they weren't protective enough so they filled up with sand inside my eyes and it really hurt my eyes bad. So I was like, I can't do this. I can't do it. And there were a lot of things on that movie that they wanted us to do that were kind of stunt oriented. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and it was like, I ain't climbing on that ladder up there two stories high and doing right. a flip flop, you know? <laughs> right. I, I was like a little, I'm not difficult, but I was like, I'm not doing that. And I'm not doing that one. So they got right. somebody else to do it for me. And I guess for some reason it didn't bother her. It did not bother her when she went into the sand. She, I guess she had some magic power. I don't know what it was, but it, it didn't bother her. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So um, as we wrap this up, I just want to say, um, it was a pleasure working with you on my series, Forgiven. Um, there's already talks of a season two from, from, from my end. So we'll see if that plays out. We'll see how that plays out. But, oh, um, great. I, I wanted to know from you, um, what was probably the most fun moment that you had making this series what well if there's any moment at all and what was well, it gosh, like that's a hard one because it was all fun it was all fun yeah it was all fun i can't uh, uh oh god goodness i okay, think well, it was fun it was fun doing the um the scenes in the house yeah um i those were fun i, I thought you was gonna say that i, I knew you was gonna yeah say that. <laughs> yeah that was that was fun um it was all fun so right. i can't i can't pick out i mean that would be like um, and working with you was fun. That's yeah, right. What'd you say? 
I said, that's right. I was working with you and it was fun to have you like on the other side of the camera. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool to see, see me. I'm, st I'm starring in the show and I'm also directing it. So that's been interesting to see me behind the camera and in front of the camera. It's interesting to watch me in the show with you because I feel like it's, it's feels, it feels so surreal because I'm working with someone as iconic as you. So it was like, it was almost like I have to keep two hats going. I have the, I have the business hat, then I have the director's hat, and then I have the fan hat where I just want to fan out sometimes. I wanted to fan out so many times on the set, but I couldn't because we're working. <laughs> right. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> fan out, you know. Uh, before as we before we wrap this up, I want to we we have this segment where we do the top five, your top five favorite whatever. So I'm gonna do a couple top fives before we wrap this up. Okay. Your top five favorite foods. I don't think you eat that much, but what's your top five favorite foods? You are so funny. Um, okay, I like yogurt, nuts, vegetables. Um, let's see, um, protein shakes. Oatmeal. And oatmeal. Wow, all healthy stuff. <laughs> what's, your, what's your top fa five uh, favorite singers? Oh, okay. Um, Bonnie Raitt. Oh, I love her. Isn't she great? Oh, she's amazing. She is um, freaking amazing. I got to say Mariah Carey's one of them. Okay. Um, Cheryl Crow is my queen. Cheryl, yes. Forgot about her. She is un unbelievable. Um, let's see. Uh, I would say, uh, Kelly Clarkson. She's amazing. Okay. And, uh, more amazing than I knew. And, um, let's see. Uh, who do I love? Who do I love? Uh, I'd have to say maybe Tina Turner. Tina bad. Tony Braxton. And Tony, Tony Braxton. Braxton I love Tony. I'm a Tony fan. I'm a Tony fan. No, you're, I'm you're, to you're, you're making me high. It's the best song in the whole yes. world. Yes. Tony is actually my top five singers of all time. Like, I love. Oh, yeah. She's awesome. awesome. I am obsessed with Tony. Um, okay. Top five um, movies. Your top five favorite films. Ooh. Okay. Somewhere in Time. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, Shine. Okay. I haven't heard of that one, I don't think. Not the yes. shining. No, just shine. Okay. But the shining. <laughs> That's number two. <laughs> yep. You got Jack, that. Jack um, Nicholson and Stanley Kubrick, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to say I'd have to say Nightmare on Elm Street, the first of one. Of course. Of course. I have to. Oh, the first and, one. And let's see. You said um, the first one? The first one. Oh wow. Okay. And um because it was the original, you know. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um and my last one. Oh my god, what would it be? What would it be? What about Bob? That's a good one. Bill Murray? Yes. Richard Dreyfus? Yes. Yeah, that's Richard a good one. Richard Dreyfus freaking kills, it. kills me. In that Actually, movie. Richard Dreyfus made that movie. He made it. I mean, everybody because thought you, it was Bill Murray, but it was Richard, it's Richard Dreyfus. Because, no, it's Richard. Because, because Bill's being Bill, right? Like, Bill, is he's a genius. Comedy. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't do the reactions, if you, don't, if you can't do the Richard... Dreyfus character right it doesn't work I know oh my god I can't he's so funny when he's like <laughs> he's like that laughing you know like trying to get him and everything oh my god I loved him he's really a him. comedy genius too Richard Dreyfus. he is he's you very know, underrated he's very underrated you know he's known for doing more dramatic stuff but he really his comedy chops was really good in that movie oh god yes, you have to I understand agree. comedy to even do that I know. I just watched it recently. And I mean, it was unbelievable. And the only other thing that I have to say is um, Steve Carell, yes. who, who I really like, uh, in Bruce Almighty. When yes. he, do you, did you see that? Incredible. Do you remember the part when he's doing the newscast and he's going Jim all... Carrey, blah, 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 blah. Carrey and Steve Carell, yes. That's Actually, me. I, I've had arguments about this, but I think... Steve Carell made that movie because people went to see Jim Carrey, but they yep. left talking about Steve Carell. <laughs> That's right. I believe it. I'm with you. You know what I mean? Like that. I'm totally with you. It yeah. was. It was. That was after that film. He became. He blew up because he was so good in those. And that just, it goes to show you. You never know what's going to be the project because that was only the scene is only barely four minutes, three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But 
it's the whole movie. It made the whole movie. <laughs> oh my God, that movie, I'm telling you that scene just absolutely killed me. That that's it's not even so much that I love the whole movie. I just love that, that scene. scene. Well, most people say that. Yeah. Most people say that. Wow. Okay, top five uh places to go. Um, England, Paris, Germany, um, Kentucky, um, and New York. You some good. You got you got good taste, baby girl. <laughs> good taste, baby girl. Okay, in the final top five. Your top five favorite things to do. Oh, okay. Oh boy, I'm so boring. Let's see. <laughs> um, uh, I love to watch movies. Movies. Love to sing. Um, love to uh, take my dogs out to the dog park. Do stuff How many with my dogs. Dog. You have? I have three. Okay. Um, I love hanging with my friends, my close friends. And um, I love keeping my weight down. And that's, that's from eating all that yogurt and nuts. <laughs> that's right. That's how I stay skinnier. <laughs> basically don't eat. You just eat yogurt and nuts. <laughs> I'm a squirrel. I'm a squirrel. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Actually, we all are supposed to eat that way, believe it or not. Yeah. Vegetables, nuts, yogurt. I mean, you got the perfect diet. You're going to stay young and healthy your whole life. So that's great. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I'm so oh, happy you that you did the podcast. I can't wait for people to give us their thoughts on the show. It debuts November 16th on Tubi globally. And uh, we thank you for doing the podcast. And I'm sure that as this podcast is being heard throughout the next weeks and years to come, we'll hopefully we'll look back at this moment and go, wow, we, we created an amazing um, series and we'll see, we'll know really soon. <laughs> Yay! Can't wait. I can't wait. And again, Fox is spending a ton of money making uh, Tubi even uh, bigger than it already is. It's actually the number one streaming service in the country that's free and Netflix, wow and netflix is the number one streaming com uh, um streaming service in the country that you pay you know yeah that's so great this is a great opportunity i think it's over 30 or 40 million people that actually watch tubi weekly so wow they that's have a, a trip. huge following and so we'll just see how they take to this show but i think that now that I have Tuesday night, now that we have Tuesday night and Carl Jackson working together, I think I think we're going to be all right. <laughs> we're going to do good things. We're going to do great things. Thank you, yes. Tuesday, for doing this. And I really appreciate you being a part of this podcast. Well, I adore you in any time. Thank you for watching this episode of the Carl Jackson podcast. My guest Tuesday. Yeah, thank you. My guest Tuesday night was an amazing guest. Thank you for watching us. Hey, go to ladyartlove.com and buy some merch. For Christmas, holidays coming up, hey, you gotta go buy some stuff. I got some really good gear, some really good clothing, and there's some other things too, like some Yoda pants, Yoda bedspread. They got all type of stuff that you just will not see anywhere else, designed by handcraft designers who actually work themselves on this product. All you have to do is go to ladyartlove.com and check them out. I think you're going to like the stuff that you see. And it's going to be great for Christmas. And there's some discounts going on right now if you log on to ladyartlove.com. Don't miss out. The Carl Jackson Collection, as well as many other things, are there right now at ladyartlove.com. Please, go. You know what? Why am I saying please? You don't want to be missing out.